Brothers and sisters, I recently returned from an assignment in Asia where we met with faithful saints and missionaries and one meeting there was in the metropolitan area, there were approximately 14,000 church members living among a population of 21 million people. Now, if that same ratio were applied to this meeting in the conference center today, we'd have only 13 members of the church scattered among this congregation of over 20,000. This experience impressed upon me how deeply grateful we must all be to know that after ages of darkness and apostasy, Joseph Smith beheld a remarkable vision of the Father and the Son in the sacred grove. Clearly in our world today, it is a rare and precious thing to have a testimony that God, our Heavenly Father, lives, that His Son, Jesus Christ, is our Savior and Redeemer, and that the priesthood authority to administer the gospel of Jesus Christ as once again upon the earth. The profound blessing of having a witness or an understanding of these truths cannot be measured or ever taken for granted. A personal testimony, as has been discussed in, by others today, is a foundation of our faith. It is the building power that makes the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints unique in the lives of its members as compared with all other religious denominations in the world. The doctrine of the Restoration is glorious in itself, but the thing that makes it powerful and imbues it with great meaning is the personal testimonies of Church members worldwide who accept the restoration of the gospel and strive to live its teachings every day of their lives. A testimony is a witness or a confirmation of eternal truth impressed upon individual hearts and souls through the Holy Ghost, whose primary ministry is to testify particularly as it relates to the Father and the Son. When one receives a testimony of truth through this divinely appointed process, it immediately begins to have impact on that person's life. According to Alma the Younger, it will begin to swell within your breasts, and you'll feel these swelling motions. You'll begin to say within yourselves, The word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. Simply stated, testimony, real testimony, born of the Spirit and confirmed by the Holy Ghost, changes lives, changes how you think and what you do, it changes what you say. It affects every priority you set and every choice you make. To have a real and abiding testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to be spiritually born of God, to receive His image in your countenances, and to experience the mighty change in your hearts. Now, like everything else in life, testimonies grow and develop through experience and service. We often hear some members, and especially children, bear their testimonies, listing the things for which they are thankful. They are thankful and show express love of family, the Church, their teachers, their friends. For them, the gospel is something that is they are grateful for and because it makes them feel happy and secure. This is good, but it is just a beginning. Testimonies need to be much more. They need to be anchored very early to the first principles of the gospel. A testimony of the reality of Heavenly Father's love, of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, and the effect of His Atonement on every son and daughter of God brings about the desire to repent and to live worthy of the companionship of the Holy Ghost. 
It also brings a confirmation to our soul of the restoration of the gospel in these latter days. Real testimony of these precious truths come as a witness by the Holy Ghost after sincere, dedicated effort, including teachings in the home, prayer, scripture study, service to others, and diligent striving to be obedient to Heavenly Father's commandments. The gain and forever hold on to a testimony of the gospel truths is worth, brothers and sisters, whatever price in spiritual preparation we may be required to pay. My experience throughout the Church leads me to worry that too many of our members' testimonies linger on I'm thankful and I love, and too few are able to say with humble but sincere clarity, I know. As a result, our meetings sometimes lack the testimony, rich spiritual underpinnings that stir the soul and have meaning, meaningful positive impact on the lives of all those who hear them. Our testimony meetings need to be more centered on the Savior, the doctrines of the gospel, the blessings of the restoration, and the teachings of the scriptures. We need to be careful and replace some of the stories and the travelogues and the lectures with pure testimony. Those who are entrusted to speak and teach in our meetings need to do so with doctrinal power that will be both heard and felt, lifting the spirits and edifying our people. You'll remember the heart of King Benjamin's powerful sermon to his people was his personal witness of the Savior who at that time had yet to be born into mortality. At one point in the King's sermon, when he had just borne witness to the people, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, and they were filled with joy because of the exceeding faith which they had in Jesus Christ who should come. And that is because the Spirit cannot be restrained when pure testimony of Christ is born. Thus, King Benjamin's people were so inspired by his testimony that their lives were changed right there on the spot, and they became a new people. Remember also Abinadi and Alma. Abinadi infuriated wicked King Noah with his courageous testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eventually, this great missionary offered the ultimate sacrifice for his witness and faith, but not before his pure testimony touched one believing heart. Alma, one of King Noah's priests, repented of his sins, accepted Jesus as the Christ, and went about privately among the people and began to teach the words of Abinadi. Many were converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ as a result of Abinadi's powerfully born testimony of the Savior, believed by one soul, Alma. The Apostle Paul also bore fervent testimony of Christ and converted many through his missionary labors. He did not shrink in bearing his testimony before King Agrippa. So mighty were his words that even this influential representative of the Roman Empire was moved to exclaim, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now the lesson, I believe, is clear. Having a testimony alone is not enough. In fact, when we are truly converted, we cannot be restrained from testifying. And as it was with the apostles and faithful members of old, so it is also our privilege, our duty, our solemn obligation to declare the things which we know to be true. Again, please keep in mind that we are talking about sharing real testimony not just speaking generally about the things we're thankful for. While it's always good to express love and gratitude, 
Such expressions do not constitute the kind of testimony that will ignite a fire of belief in the lives of others. To bear testimony is to bear witness by the power of the Holy Ghost, to make a solemn declaration, declaration of truth based on knowledge or belief. Clear declaration of truth makes a difference in people's lives. That is what changes hearts. That is what the Holy Ghost can confirm in the hearts of God's children. Although we can have testimonies of many things as members of the Church, there are basic truths we need to constantly teach one another and share with those not of our faith. Testify that God is our Father and that Jesus is the Christ. The plan of salvation is centered on the Savior's Atonement. Joseph Smith restored the fullness of the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Book of Mormon is evidence that our testimony is true. Miraculous things happen when members join with missionaries and share pure testimony with those who are not members of the Church. For example, while many people were touched by Alma's testimony in the land of Ammonihah, when Amulek stood and added his testimony to Alma's, the people began to be astonished, seeing there was more than one witness who testified. The same thing can happen with us today. As we stand together, the Lord will help us find many more of His sheep who will know His voice as we unitedly share our testimonies with them. Many years ago, Brigham Young told of an early missionary in the Church who was asked to share his testimony with a large group of people. According to President Young, this particular elder had never been able to say he knew that Joseph Smith was a prophet. He would have preferred to just say a prayer and then leave, but the circumstances made that impossible. So he started to speak, and as soon as he got out, got Joseph out, his a prophet was next. And from that, his tongue was loosened, and he continued talking until near sundown. President Young used this experience to teach that the Lord pours out His Spirit upon a man when he testifies that which the Lord gives him to testify of. The prophet's brother Hiram understood this and testified fearlessly of divine truth as it had been revealed to his brother Joseph and confirmed in his own heart. His testimony blessed the lives of many, including Parley P. Pratt. When Parley first encountered the Book of Mormon, Hiram took him into his own home, spent the night teaching and testifying to him. He bore witness of the prophetic mantle that rested upon Joseph and of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Shortly thereafter, Hiram set aside his own needs and went with Parley to honor his request to be baptized. We may never fully comprehend or be able to measure the far-reaching effects of Hiram's one-on-one -on -one testimony to Parley P. Pratt. In additional, addition to Parley's faithful posterity, his apostolic witness and ministry, missionary service drew countless souls into the kingdom of God, including among those who joined the Church as a direct result of his ministry in Canada were Joseph Fielding and his sisters Mary and Mercy. After his first wife, Jerusa, died, Hiram met and married Mary Fielding. And from their marriage came President Joseph S. Smith and countless other Church members and leaders. Now, brothers and sisters, I realize that not all testimonies will return such a blessing as Hiram's did. Joseph Kimber, a humble new convert in Thatcham, England, bore his simple testimony to a fellow farmhand. I believe Brother Kimber's witness of Joseph Smith and the Restoration is what ignited the fire 
of belief in 17-year-old Henry Ballard's heart and caused him to ask to be baptized. Generations of the Ballard family are the beneficiaries of that humble testimony. Members and missionaries in our day can have experiences of converting others by living our lives as best we can and being prepared to stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places. A friend recently told me about being on a 90-minute bus ride in Brazil. He felt impressed to go to the back of the bus to speak to the young people who had been serving as guides for his group of businessmen. An associate of his father followed him to the back of the bus and heard his testimony of the truthfulness of the restored gospel. This man later said, When I heard your testimony, I had the distinct feeling go through my whole body that these things were true, and he and his wife will soon be baptized. The missionaries are now preparing to teach the lessons, not as memorized dialogue or rote presentation, but rather they will outline gospel principles in an organized way, calling upon the Spirit to direct how they communicate gospel truth to investigators, spirit to spirit and heart to heart. Brothers and sisters, join together with the missionaries in sharing your precious testimony every day, witnessing at every opportunity the glorious message of the Restoration. The fire of your testimony is all that you need in order to introduce the gospel to many more of our Father's children. Trust in the Lord and never underestimate the impact your testimony can have upon the lives of others as you bear it with the power of the Spirit. Doubt and fear are the tools of Satan. The time has come for all of us to overcome any fear and boldly take every opportunity to share our testimonies of the gospel. May the Lord bless you as you continue to nurture your testimonies through your prayers, your personal gospel study, and your acts of service. With great joy, I humbly testify our Heavenly Father loves us. Jesus is the Christ. Joseph Smith restored the fullness of the everlasting gospel, and the Book of Mormon testifies of these truths. We're led by a living prophet today, and I pray that the Lord may bless you, my dear brothers and sisters, as you teach and testify which I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.